Hi, so we're going to be talking about Python modules in Python. Okay, so this is where we really get away from um, from basic Python and we get into more uh, more into just useful, you know, uh, getting things done type Python. <laughs> so, so hopefully you find it interesting. Uh, we're in um, uh, so we're going to be using Jupyter notebooks. We're in uh, the big IBM's Big Data University uh, website. It's a free account. Uh, we're basically we're not using any of their content right now. We're just using uh, the free interface for Jupyter Notebook. Um, of course, it's a fantastic site, um, which we'll explore later. But um, but for now, we're just using the Jupyter Notebook. So um, so we're going to go ahead. You can copy and paste the URL of the uh, the um, the notebook file. It's in the comments or in your assignment. Okay, so that's modules and packages. Okay, so we're going to do Python 3, okay? So what is a module? Well, module in Python is actually comes from the um, actual file system that Python is on, okay? So essentially what it is is it's a, it's a folder, all right? So, um, sorry, so a mo <laughs> I apologize. A module is a file, okay? So it's a file with a .py extension, okay? And it's it's just sitting on the file system, so it's it's code that's sitting there that you can call and use in your code. All right. So a good example of this is this uh, URL lib. Okay. So when we say import, so if we want to go use this bunch of code, okay. So the power of Python, really, you know, the basic the basic functions are great. Okay, they're very useful, but the real the real power of Python is the community, right? So. So essentially, it's you know you're standing on the shoulders of giants. You're you're using code that has taken you know millions and millions of hours to write, um, and you're able to leverage this code to do some amazing things. Um, and without it, uh, you know, it, you know, we would all be, you know, we would all be reinventing the wheel all the time. Okay, so so um, so it's really valuable. In fact, you can't really get things done without doing it. So. Okay, so here we are. We're going to import this set of code. Okay, so this URL lib, it's basically a, it's a library that allows you to, to interact with the internet in your code. All right, so, so import URL lib dot request. Okay, and then we're going to go, we're going to go ahead and use this code. to. So if we, if we run this code, it's going to produce an error. Okay, and, uh, and so essentially what we're going to do here is that we're going to open a URL. So let's so let's say that we want to open. Um, whoops, I put two. Let's say we want to open. It's Google's front page. Okay, so we're going to shift enter. Okay, so we get a client response. We get an H. We get a we get an you know an object back. Um, that's a that's a response. Okay, so so. Now we know a little bit at this point, right? Okay, so we know that we're getting back an object and it's of some type. Okay, well, how, how would I explore this a little bit, right? So how would I get this, this I get this, you know, this, first of all, I, I imported something, right? So if I type URL lib dot request dot, and then I hit tab. It's going to give me everything I can do with URL lib request, which apparent was which is a lot of stuff. <laughs> so, so, but but we also know that once I once I do this URL, so I've opened this URL, but I get something back, right? So, so let's say I call this response, okay, and then I go I go response dot, and then I do tab, okay. In theory, that should have given me some options. Um, but we can also go look this up. So let's go ahead and we're going to go ahead and look up URL lib. Um, we're going to look up, uh, well, how do we get that? You know, what can we, how can we use that? All right, so here we are, URL lib request. Okay, and here we get straight into the um, docs for it. Okay, so URL lib request, extensive library for opening URLs. Okay. Okay, so here's a, here it is, request.
Okay. So for example, if we say URL open, which is what we did, right? Okay. We're going to get this response. So we should be able to call info on it and just kind of get some information. This is just an example of what we could do. We should get, be able to get some information about what, um, about what came back. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to print it. Okay, <clears throat> so there's, this is what came back, right? So we got some information about the page. Okay, so there's all kinds of stuff that we can we can uh, we can bring back. Okay, so um, so uh, Okay, so for example, uh, if we want to read the first few lines, so usually there's examples in this in this uh, documents, right? So we could say, oh well, we want to we want to read the first. Uh, we want to we we could just say we want to print the entire page. Now this wouldn't be too smart, but but we could do it. Okay, so. Uh, so let's say we're just going to read the first you know, 500 things, right? So, okay. So there's the first 500 characters, right? So this came back. It's, it's, it's HTML that came back, right? Okay. All right. So anyway, so this, so this is an example of where our URL lib request comes back. Okay. Okay, so we can look at the functions that are implemented with each module. So we can import this, right? And we can, using the dir command, we can list all of the functions that are available to us. Okay, so notice that uh, with this request, we can do all these things, right? Okay, so URL open is one of them. That's what we called, right? We can also call help on that, right? So we did URL open. And basically, the help function returns, well, how do I call it? Well. Here we have to supply with URL, which we did. Okay, then we have these kind of other arguments, which are which are given default, so we don't have they're already provided with default values. So when you see like data equals none, timeout equals something else, cal ca file equals none, ca path equals none. Okay, so so these things are all provided with defaults. So the really the only one that's really necessary, right, that I must provide is URL, which we did earlier. Okay. All right, so what happens when you want to make your own packages? Well, a package is a folder, okay? And inside that folder, you create an empty, it can be an empty file, and it's called init. These are two underscores, and init underscore dot py, okay? Uh, and, and that's a package, and inside of it, you would have, um, you would have a file, right? You would have a, a, a module, which is a dot py file. All right. So, so this, um, then if you want to use on, these on the computer, they have to be in like the Python path, and it gets into a little bit more complication. But you just need to understand that when you're importing these files, okay, so when I'm importing URL lib, that is, that is a folder, right? So that is a package, okay? And then when I start to, in, to do request, right, that's a package too, okay? And then when I get down to the actual, you know, end here, right, with the actual um, uh, modules, then that's when we get down to the actual files, right, that contain code, all right? Um, okay, so in this case, we're gonna import RE, right? So let's look, take a look at the exercise, okay? In this exercise, you will need to print out an alphabetical sorted list of all functions in the RE module, which contain the word find. Okay, you may need to review loops, lists, and if statements to complete the task. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pause and you go ahead and try to complete this. Now you might have to go ahead and open up a couple of these. Um, you should have in your account at this point, you should have these different Python notebooks like loops and that type of thing. Okay. Okay. So, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. You get to work. And when you're done, unpause the video.
Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and, so we have import RE, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is gonna get a, we're gonna get a list of all the things, all the, um, all the things contained in RE, okay? We're gonna use the DRR command here. Okay, now notice the DRR command already returns a, a uh, alphabetical list, okay? So that's, that's pretty easy. Okay, so it outputs an alphabetical list here. All right, and we want only the things that contain the word find. Okay, so we're gonna say that for function in DIRE, okay, oops. If find in function print function. Okay, there we have it. So find all and find iter. Okay, so those are our two ones that are in functions. So basically all we did was we got RE returned us a list, right? So that's the DIR right there, DIR RE returned a list. And we iterated through that list using for, so for function in the list of functions. Okay, and then it said if find, the word find is in function, right? Because it returned a list of strings, right? So we can just search it for the word find, the string find. Then we printed the function. Okay, straightforward enough. Okay, so go make sure that you understand uh, just kind of what a you know what a module is, what a um, what a package is, and then how to explore packages that are on your own. So for the time being, you're probably going to be ingesting most code, you know, for the level at which this video is meant. Uh, you're going to be using other people's code for the time being. So just make sure that you understand what it is and how to kind of find out what to, how to do what you need to do. So. Uh, best of luck. Good luck. Uh, if you are doing this for the assignment, please print your PDF of your file print preview. It contains your answer to this exercise. Uh, best of luck.